welcome to the ASCO Guidelines Podcast, one of ASCO's podcasts delivering timely information to keep you up to date on the latest changes, challenges, and advances in oncology. You can find all the shows, including this one, at ASCO.org slash podcasts. My name is Brittany Harvey, and today I'm interviewing Dr. Beverly Moy from Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston, Massachusetts, lead author on chemotherapy and targeted therapy for endocrine pretreated or hormone receptor negative metastatic breast cancer, ASCO guideline rapid recommendation update. Thank you for being here, Dr. Moy. Thank you for having me, Brittany. I'm glad to be here. Then first, I'd like to note that ASCO takes great care in the development of its guidelines and ensuring that the ASCO conflict of interest policy is followed for each guideline. The full conflict of interest information for this guideline panel is available online with the publication of the guideline in the Journal of Clinical Oncology. Dr. Moy, do you have any relevant disclosures that are directly related to this guideline topic? I do not have any relevant disclosures. It's great to have you back on the podcast. Last we spoke, we were discussing the July 2022 rapid update of this guideline regarding the use of trastuzumab deruxtecan. What prompted this second rapid update to the guideline? Thank you very much for that question, Brittany. The guidelines committee decided to issue another rapid guideline update because of their second interim analysis results of the Tropics 02 trial. This trial showed that sasetuzumab govotecan had a significant improvement of over three months in overall survival compared to chemotherapy of physician's choice in patients with pretreated metastatic hormone receptor positive and HER2 new negative breast cancer. So we felt that the strength of this data compelled the ASCO guideline committee to issue yet another update. Understood. So then based off this strong data that you just mentioned from Tropics 2 what is the updated recommendation from the guideline expert panel? So the guidelines expert panel really wanted to get this information out because we felt compelled that clinicians should be aware that sasetuzumab govotecan is another treatment option for patients with endocrine-resistant metastatic hormone receptor positive and HER2-negative breast cancer. So we felt that clinicians may use this drug in patients who have received at least two prior treatments in the metastatic setting. Okay. You just mentioned this is one of several treatment options. So as this new recommendation is implemented, what should clinicians know? So I think that clinicians really need to be aware that sasetuzumab govotecan, which is a newer drug, is an antibody drug conjugate. It really does have a role in patients with metastatic hormone receptor positive HER2 new negative endocrine refractory breast cancer. I think clinicians have been used to this drug in the setting of metastatic triple negative breast cancer, but the results of the Tropics O2 trial would show us that it actually has a lot of efficacy and even an overall survival benefit in patients with metastatic hormone receptor positive breast cancer. So clinicians should be made aware that this is a treatment option that does give a overall survival benefit. Great. It's great to hear that there's an overall survival benefit with this drug. So in addition to that, how does this rapid update impact patients with hormone receptor positive HER2 negative metastatic breast cancer? So, you know, I think that it's important for clinicians to remember that patients with metastatic hormone receptor positive HER2 new negative breast cancer, the first line therapies are endocrine therapy and targeted therapies. But when their disease becomes endocrine refractory, we have several treatment options. And usually the standard is sequential single agent chemotherapy. What this guideline update is telling us is that sasetuzumab govotecan, when compared to other treatments of physician's choice, really does improve overall survival and progression-free survival. So it really should be considered. Excellent. And then finally, are there ongoing research developments that the panel is keeping an eye on for any future updates to this guideline? I know this Guideline was last published in 2021, and there's already been two rapid updates to it. Yes, that's a really great question, Brittany, because this is a very active field. And I think that it's important, actually, to take this guideline update with sasetuzumab govotecan in the context of our last guideline update, which, as you said earlier, was with the other antibody drug conjugate, trastuzumab deruxtecan. That was our last guideline update in patients who had what we call metastatic HER2 low disease, where trastuzumab deruxtecan had a significant overall survival advantage as well. So what these two guideline updates are really pointing out is that there's this new 
class of drugs, these antibody drug conjugates that have so much promise and so much activity in metastatic breast cancer, whether it's hormone receptor positive or hormone receptor negative. So future research really has to help us clarify how do we sequence these drugs most appropriately now that we have these two very active treatment options that have a significant overall survival advantage. And then research is also has to really guide us into the resistance mechanisms that may be in common or not in common with these two antibody drug conjugates. So I think that we're really looking at results of future trials to see how best to sequence them, if they should be used earlier in treatment in the metastatic setting, and we await the results of those trials. Absolutely. We'll look forward to those future research developments and work with you and the panel to continuously update these guidelines. So I want to thank you so much for your work leading these guideline rapid recommendation updates. And thank you for your time today, Dr. Moy. Thank you, Brittany, for having me. And thank you to all of our listeners for tuning in to the ASCO Guidelines podcast series. To read the full guideline, go to www.asco.org slash breast dash cancer dash guidelines. You can also find many of our guidelines and interactive resources in the free ASCO Guidelines app available in the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. If you have enjoyed what you've heard today, please rate and review the podcast and be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. The purpose of this podcast is to educate and to inform. This is not a substitute for professional medical care and is not intended for use in the diagnosis or treatment of individual conditions. Guests on this podcast express their own opinions, experience, and conclusions. Guest statements on the podcast do not express the opinions of ASCO. The mention of any product, service, organization, activity, or therapy should not be construed as an ASCO endorsement.